Hello and welcome back to our Vlandian night. Now, as you can see, I'm actually in pursuit of these fellows over here because I thought I'd actually help out one of our Karakurgit mercenaries here. And uh, I think I'm... You know what I might do? I might just upgrade my troops real quick and then go and um, auto-resolve this because auto-resolve is going to give me more experience thanks to Battle Lord Tweaks. And it's going to give us a decent amount of influence as well. And in the last episode, I don't know whether you noticed... But we took back control of Vlandia. And I'm extremely excited about that, to be honest. I feel like that is a really, really nice turning point for us. I'm going to be taking all these prisoners because I have all the space in the world, apparently, for some reason. I think I must have um, sold a whole bunch or uh, placed them into a dungeon somewhere or whatever the case may be. But there you go. We have some space now. I was actually thinking of taking Uthulheim Castle, but I wasn't really sure whether that would be a good idea. I've actually spent uh, quite a bit um, of the day playing uh, this new game, and uh, I think you might like it. It has Mountain Blade-style combat, and uh, if you like that, well, you're probably going to like all the historical characters that they have in there as well. Maybe you won't like it, maybe you will. It really depends on your sensibilities, I suppose, but I think it's really fun. And let me just say that Spartacus... Oh, Spartacus is my favorite character in that. He is super, super fun to play with. Anyway, um, we're going to take a look at our medicine skill here. We actually got 200 with it. Town projects that are related with sanitation and health give daily prosperity bonus by one per day. That is as governor. None of these are actually really going to help me that much. Loyalty, um, I guess we'll just go for the prosperity bonus. That seems like a, well, the best possible option for us at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to go over to Mazhadan Castle, I think. Apparently, we have now declared... Oh, the Azurai have declared war on us. As I expected. <laughs> as I expected, of course. Okay. So, let's have a look here. Mm, how can we make peace with anyone? We really can't, can we? Uh, <laughs> we ca I mean, look, they've got war exhaustion, we've got war exhaustion. They have a massive amount of war exhaustion, so it might make sense for us to send a messenger to Lukon and just basically say, Hey, do you want some peace? And uh, everyone else is not looking like they want to do it either. We're literally at war against every single faction with the exception of the Sturgeons, which is not exactly great. We do have Macedon Castle here, though, which would probably be a pretty decent target for us to try and take. So I think we'll probably try to do that. Let me, uh, let me go in there real quick. And then I'm going to go and see if I can build an army. I don't have that much influence anymore, unfortunately. So it might very well be the case that we're not going to have an extremely strong army. 900 or so units is probably going to be enough to seal the deal, especially if we are able to destroy the walls ahead of time. So that's going to be kind of nice to do. Uh, they only have 30,000, of course. And you can already see that the power level is, is definitely in our favor. You can see that. So, ooh, hello. Uh, the lake rats, Arion's coming. Uh, we have some other people from Batania over there, but we shouldn't have to worry about them too much. Ragnvad is actually over there as well. Oh, interesting. So he has defected to, uh, oh, Mantios. Oh, okay. Hey, Mantios. Would you like to put Mantos? Uh, why do I always do Mantos? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, would you like to join me, sir? And we're also going to speak to uh, Mr. Ragnvad as well. Wait a minute. He hates us like no one's business. He really hates us. I, I actually don't even know whether that's him. Is that actually him? I don't really know. But if these guys really want to fight me, then they are welcome to do so. I don't think they're going to be able to achieve victory here. If I gain all of my... Uh, all of my... Uh, oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, hello. How? What do you have? He has mostly recruits and low tier units. Uh, these these guys are not looking are not looking that good. Um, what's Mantios got? He's looking okay. All right. Uh, they have wow. They have thirteen hundred. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy. Okay, so thirteen hundred. What's our combat strength like? It seems okay. So let's actually go in here. We we've only got four people. We only have four vassals, so it might very well... Oh, look at this. We actually have the advantage. 
We actually have the advantage in terms of combat strength. Can you believe it? With this amount of troops? Wow. Uh, this is actually a really nice time of day, by the way, to fight. Because the battlefield is illuminated in such a way so that it's really crisp and clear, if you know what I mean. It kind of has that uh, early morning, like really early morning sort of spring day feeling to it, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, let's go for a... No, I do not want to charge you imbeciles. Thank you very much. I would like to put you in shield wall, thanks. Okay, there you go. They're going to go in shield wall. And uh, I think the main issue that we have is that when these guys are numerous, I'm talking about many, many more of these guys, they're, they're always going to be very separated. You know, it's going to be very difficult for me to put them into a proper shield wall because I don't know whether you notice, but when I put my infantry into a shield wall, it actually says archers into a shield wall, but that is actually just the game giving the infantry that tag because the archers in question are actually all the skirmishers that are involved in that formation. I think I saw a comment about that and I actually replied to it, but I just wanted to reiterate on that and to kind of give an explanation to those of you that might be wondering what's going on with that. Um, and, and indeed, that is a, a fair point to make because it's kind of weird to see that, you know? It's kind of weird to basically be like, okay, you're putting your archers into shield wall? No, I'm, I'm actually not, but you know, it, uh, it just seems like that. Because you can quite clearly see that I'm selecting infantry right here, and you can see where they've gone and all that stuff. So, yeah, hopefully you'll uh, understand that now. Anyway, uh, I, I think we should be okay here. We have a slight elevation for our archers. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell these guys to come over here. I'm going to tell my horse archers to charge in. I've only got eight of them. So they're really not going to be that effective but they're going to be effective enough at least i hope so let's take my cavalry over here because i'd like to try and destroy the enemy's cavalry as soon as i possibly can so let me see if i can do that nice horse kill let's tell my uh cavalry to charge in right here hopefully we'll be able to kill the enemy's cavalry and then if any of them decide to split off which indeed they are deciding to do i'm actually going to call them back immediately because we do not want them to um, we don't want them to skirmish with the entire enemy army on their back, do we? We certainly don't want that. So that's why I'm being very careful with that. Oh, nice spear to the head. Did you see that? That was exceptional. Very nice indeed. Okay, so we should be a bit careful though because these guys are going to have a significant amount of cavalry with lances and so on and so forth. And those guys are going to be very damaging for us. This guy has no idea what is about to befall him, apparently, apart, apart from a little poke in the, in the shoulder. And that is now him dead. So that's nice to know. All right, so these guys are going to be easy enough to kill as well. I'm actually really surprised that the main enemy army has completely retreated from their main posturing point. Did you notice that? They literally moved back. So let's move my forces ahead now. And we will continue to push them to the edge of the battlefield and continue to exert pressure by having this massive roving army of craziness. Because let's face it, this amount of cavalry at any point in one place, super, super powerful. Especially considering most of these guys are Vlandian vanguards and they're also my companions too. So, mo most of these are actually my companions, hilariously enough. And um, speaking about companions, I think what I'll actually be doing is I will probably be making some some parties out of them as well because I think someone actually suggested doing that in the comments and uh, I think to myself wow that actually sounds like a really cool idea because we have enough money now to be able to you know sufficiently produce um, enough well <laughs> enough wages I guess uh, you know we have enough wages to be able to make that happen. So if we can do that, we're going to be in a really, really good position because that's going to exponentially increase the amount of strength that Vlandia has. But we have to be careful because we can't just make anyone into a party leader because every single, um, every single person that is a companion right now, uh, as far as I'm aware, they... I don't think they have any leadership skill or anything like that or any steward skill so it might very well be the case that it's going to be a bit difficult to find a good candidate because here's the thing i only have capacity for five 
parties. And that's not really, in my opinion, that's not really enough for the Distinguished Service mod. So it might very well be the case that I might decide to download another mod that increases the amount of party capacity. But it really depends. I don't want to make it too overpowered by having an unlimited amount of parties, but I don't think it really makes sense with the amount of companions that I have to limit myself to five. So I'm thinking I'll probably get something that might increase my party limit to 10, maybe 15, maybe something like that. I'm not looking to go overboard on this. I'm just looking to maybe increase the limit by a small margin, nothing too crazy. So here's the thing. I'm actually not sure what to do with this particular situation. I, I wonder whether, are we still firing at them? Yeah, I believe we are actually still firing at them. So my cavalry is now getting absolutely murdered which I don't appreciate, but I can't, I don't really know what else to do apart from run them through some of their lines and then just get them to, uh, well, do some damage here and there. Seems like we're actually losing combat strength because of my actions though, so that's not particularly good. But thankfully my actions in the first part of the battle were decent, but not so much anymore. How many cavalry do we have? 18. We literally lost that many. Are you serious? We literally lost... What was it? 70? We lost 70 units? Just from me running around those guys. Whoa. Okay, that's that's actually some pretty significant losses right there. Okay. Note to self, do not do that ever again. Do not have people follow you and not run through these <laughs> through these enemies ever. Okay, yes, a good idea. Oh well, never mind. I guess we could just wait and you know, wait for our weakening of the opponent by our archers. And then we can uh, move ourselves in here. Let's move. Let's move a little bit forward, shall we? I'm actually not sure what the enemy is doing, to be honest, because they're not really doing anything. Ooh, gotta be careful, gotta be careful. We really do not want to get our horse killed right here. This is gonna be bad. And now I've just run my last little bit of cavalry into the enemy's lines. Did I? Yes, I believe I did. What an imbecile I am. Okay. Yes, I probably should not have done that. I actually thought that I told them to hold position, but apparently I didn't. Oh well, never mind. I suppose what it does do is it does provide our crossbowmen and various other ranged units an ability to shoot the opponent in the back so that they're not going to get blocked with all of their arrows or bolts. So that that obviously does make a bit of a difference. Whoa, the AI is so supernatural. Crazy. Crazy how supernatural they are sometimes. Did you see that? That, um, that Imperial Legionary or something, whatever he was, he was literally supernaturally turning around and basically being like, ah, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to slash at you while you're on your horse without me even seeing where you're coming from yet. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that they do. Pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll just move forward. This is actually a pretty weird situation to have. Usually the AI at this point would have decided to completely just charge straight on in, I think. I'm going to just raise my shield up like this. Oh, dear. Yeah, don't, don't, no, yeah, there we go. Okay, that is perfectly fine. Shall I just tell my infantry to charge in? Move. I'm kind of wondering whether that's a good idea. Maybe? Uh, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to switch to my one-handed sword for the moment. And we'll see how this goes. I have, I have a bad feeling about this, to be honest. Okay, come on, murder them. Murder them all. Oh, dear. A lot of people right here. And they're able to block me like no one's business as well. They're, they're really they're really frustrating to fight against, actually, hilariously enough. Okay, so let's tell my uh, cavalry to charge in, tell my horse archers to charge in, tell my infantry to charge in, tell my archers to charge in, tell everyone to charge in, and uh, we'll basically see what happens here. I really don't know what the enemy is doing. Because on the one hand, they're like playing extremely defensively. And on the other hand, then they're, they're well destroying our cavalry in all, all kinds of different ways. So let me see if I can get on this 
Vlandy and Corsa. Oh, yeah. This is looking nice. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. Seems like the enemy is actually uh, retreating. I think they seem to be retreating right now. I really do not want to die. An auto-delegation command at this time would probably put the nail in our coffin, to be honest. I, I do not have any faith in the auto-delegation command at all at this point. The only way that the auto-delegation... Oh, no, I'm dead. I am dead. Did I, Am I? No. no. Oh, I'm dead. I, I mean, I could have kept my shield up, but I wanted to try to deal some damage to these archers. Uh, it might very well spell the spell doom for our army right here, but I think with the with the numbers advantage that we have, I think that should be a victory. Yeah, it seems like it is because their morale has been destroyed so heavily already. But that is a very nice victory for us. Okay, so there you go. Whoa, huge amounts of Batanian Fian champions going to be joining us right here. I like it. Thank you very much for that. And um, uh, what was I what was I actually speaking about before? Oh, now I've actually completely forgotten. I do apologize. I, I got myself distracted all over the place right there. But anyway, there you go. 84 Renown. Actually, 84 Influence. 132 Renown. And we will be able to let all these guys go, which is, of course, customary in this situation. We'll try to persuade these guys at a later point. And the more relation we have with them, the better. So let's see if we can make that work. There we go. Where's where's Mantios? Where is Mantios? Uh, how much relation do we have with you, sir? We have 28 with him now. That's actually pretty good. Look at that. 489 prisoners. What? That's that's insanity. That is absolute insanity. Okay, let's have a look. Oh wow, we do we have no space. I'm gonna take them. <laughs> I'm going to take all of the prisoners. I'm literally going to be moving at 0 0.1 speed at this point. And uh, people ask me, e even now, consistently, by the way, in the comments, why are you why are you not taking prisoners? You know, why, why are you not taking prisoners? And I'm like, I am not taking them, not because I don't want to, but because they slow me down by such a considerable margin. And look, wait a minute, look at that. I'm literally moving at 1.2. 1.2. That's that's crazy. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to continue this siege. I I think I might if I restore myself a little bit. Oh, dear. No, it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to. Uh, I think I'm going to take that. Going to take that peace agreement. Uh, mainly because I would like to be able to try and persuade some of these guys. And maybe if they're not in an army, then that would be nice. So let's see what happens with all, all of the messengers that we've sent off. Basically, making peace with anyone at this point, I would be accepting. So let's have a look at Mr. Lucon here. Um, wait a minute. We've already made peace with you. So why are you why are you speaking to me now? <laughs> uh, I could give him, I could give him some money. Hey, there's there's hey there's fifteen thousand and our relations increased with him. Ah. <laughs> uh, that, that really makes no difference whatsoever for us right now. I was actually hoping to make a peace agreement with him beforehand, but apparently not. Okay, so Raganvad, um, is he actually still... Oh, he's actually still a part of this. Oh, okay. There is no diplomacy option here for me, unfortunately. I would be able to get him... I would be able to give him some cash, but I don't really want to. He's got such a low relation with us already that it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. All right. Um, so I'm actually going to be disbanding our army here as well. I do want to continue besieging things, and we might very well go for something like, uh, we might try to take back Taco Castle, or maybe go for Omor or something like that, but I do need to return back to Varcheg kind of soon to make sure that we're not really suffering too much um, from all kinds of things. We need to make sure that we are prepared for the next phase of our battle against them. Okay, so let's have a look. We might be able to get Mantios here as well. I would love to have been able to talk to him before the peace agreement. Um, but uh, if that, you know, sometimes you just can't get the optimal circumstances. He actually joined us? Oh, oh 
now I'm oh now I'm oh, now I'm grinding my gears right there. Oh, yeah, he, he's he's grinding my gears, not me. I'm not grinding my own gears. That, that, well, I, I sometimes do, but uh, you know. Anyway, that's oh that's terrible. Mm, that is absolutely awful. Okay, well, whatever the case, I can't really do much about it now. So yeah, uh, not very good, is it? No, not very good. Okay, so. Um, someone, someone told me that the reason why I'm so weighed down is because of my crude iron. I, I know that. Um, but here's the thing this, this is just 0 0.5 weight. If I sell a little bit of this, um, then you can see that my weight doesn't go down that much. I, I, it's not really the fault of the crude iron in my opinion. Basically what the main problem is, is that I'm literally lugging around 780 units of grain. <laughs> that weight, oh yeah, that, that weight is pretty big. So you can see right here, look at look at this. I could just literally get rid of all of this. I have so many days worth of food, as you can see right here. I, I literally have 216 days worth of food. And that's the reason uh, why I'm weighed down so heavily. Uh, I am keeping the crude iron just literally because of bla uh, you know blacksmithing and uh, trying to make, ar well, not, not armor, but trying to make things. And look at this. I actually gained some trade skill points. Oh, can you believe it? Oh, wow. That's actually amazing. Yeah, I loved my uh, my trader, Mr. Pelosaur. Pelosaur, the pelican trader fellow. He was really, really cool. Okay, uh, d decreased trade penalty for equipment. We're going to be taking that because I mostly sell armor and weapons. I know. It's such a... Oh, you couldn't believe it, could you? No. Anyway, troops in your formation gain plus five hit points. Useless, in my opinion. Reduces recruitment cost of infantry troops by 30%. That is, in my opinion, also kind of useless because we're not actually recruiting people that much anymore. We are more converting prisoners into units and then utilizing them as much as we possibly can. So I guess what I will do instead is take drills, which gives all parties, uh, actually all troops in the party, gain an additional 1 XP per day, which, in my opinion, is still not that great, but it is better than nothing, I suppose. It is better than nothing. Okay, so if Thorgood is here, then I will do a little bit of smithing. But if he isn't, then I will not. He is not. Okay, well, that, that didn't really help, did it? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I guess what I could do is I could do a little bit of uh, a little bit of smelting. Let's see if we have any uh, new parts available here. We don't? Are you serious? We don't have any new parts? So we've unlocked everything that we can from this? Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Okay, well, let's just uh, smelt a little bit then with Bruce. Because I think he does have a little bit of a, a focus in uh, smithing now. So we could get him a little bit. Just a little. There we go, there's 75 for him. And now let me just see if I can maybe find some items that give me three. These Highland Spite clubs are crazy. Look at that. They give me three hardwood every single time I do that. That is amazing. And we can then just switch to someone else. I mean, so many people. We have so many people in our in our army right now that I can literally just go crazy on this. Oh, I don't know why I don't know why we're doing some random item right now, but we're still gaining three hardwood, which is exactly what we want to do. So we're just gonna continue onward here. And then we're just gonna do this with this guy. There we go. He has no more energy for some reason. And then this guy. Look at how much hardwood we're getting. Oh, we're going to weigh ourselves down so much. Oh, dear. That is really not going to help us out that much, is it? No, not very much. Okay, so wait a minute. Let me see if I can find someone with the uh, multiple charcoal making skill. Oh, we really don't have anyone here on the first page? Are you serious? Well, let's just get this guy. Oh, no. Okay, apparently I can't even get that guy to do it. Okay, what about this guy then? He's already at... F oh, we might as well get him to 50. Let's get him to 50. There we go. Get him to 50 and then we'll just leave it the way it is. But let's hope I'm not over-encumbered again. We are. <laughs> of course we are, of course. Okay, so let me sell some of my armor. Because that's probably going to be a bit of a perpetrator. Okay, so let's sell all of this. Armor is not even that... It's not even that weighty. Are you serious? Look at that. It's not even that weighty. It's mostly trade goods. Okay, so I guess what I'll have to do is... Sheep! Look at how much sheep I have. What? Why do I have so much sheep? 
Okay, uh, yeah, cotton can go. Oh, we need the charcoal. Linen can go. And uh, what else do we have? Well, not that much, actually. Yeah, not that much. Just a huge amount of grain and stuff. Right. Okay, uh, I guess I will... I mean, look at this. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to get rid of all the cows, actually. Okay, so let's just do that. There we go. All right, so let's let's go on to Revel now, actually, as well, because I do need to continue making sure that the town is constructing things because we need to make sure that our infrastructure is intact. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. We also need to do these quests. We still have 400 days remaining, but those days can very quickly disappear before you if you allow them to. So we need to be a bit cautious on that. Make sure that we keep an eye on it. Because before you know it, it's going to be like, oh, you have, uh, you know, 10 days left, you know, and then it's going to be kind of hard for us to complete any of that. So, yeah, let's let's keep an eye on it together, shall we? Otherwise, let's go into Revel, see what's going on with our infrastructure. And it seems like we have a uh, decision to make here as well. I can give this to Mantios. I will actually be doing that because giving it to Mantios is uh, making all the sense in the world because he has no fiefs because he joined us in peacetime. So that's real unfortunate, because I think he actually would have joined us with Epicrotia. I think he would have brought Epicrotia over to us, but unfortunately he got to us at the wrong moment. So that's kind of sad. Anyway, let's uh, improve the workshop. Let's increase the amount that we have here. There we go. And let's get a forum. Let's get some aqueducts. We just want to make sure that there are active projects always being done here that's the main thing and let me see what else we want to go for here so the capacity is also exceeded still so i guess i will continue to sell some stuff here as well there we go come on get it yeah there we go okay so we're now under capacity i should also buy some horses here too so let's buy all of these done <laughs> And we are bankrupting our own towns, which is really not the best idea, all things considered. All right, so after a little bit of time, I uh, sorted out my uh, garrison a little bit, made sure that everything was okay there. And I took out a couple more units because I wanted to have a maximum army size for the next phase of our war effort against the Batanians. So let's see what we can do with that. Otherwise, I'm going to be taking Steelmaker 2 here. And I think that's actually going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.